This paper was presented at the JCT Traffic Signals Symposium 2023 in Nottingham, thanks to the support of AGD Systems, Inrix, Message Maker Displays, PTV Group, Simplify Systems, Smart Micro UK, and TRL Software. So in early 2022, um, we started this project with Lancashire County Council. Um, I think Lancashire County Council probably started this before then, but that was the start of our involvement. Um, and essentially we were tasked with delivering the detailed design um, of a Cyclops Junction um, in Preston. The project was a really exciting opportunity um, to work on something new and different and uh, really try and make a difference to the uh, local area. Um, so this presentation really is just to share our experience designing uh, something like this. Um, and I know there's probably lots of designers out there that have probably faced some of the same challenges, so I thought it'd just be interesting to see how we dealt with them. So what I'll do, I'll do a quick fly through of active travel. I'm sure most of you know about that already. Um, then I'll do a brief uh, intro to a Cyclops Junction. Um, I'll then introduce the junction itself in Preston, and I'll hand over to Amadeep we will talk a little bit about some of the design decisions and what we learnt. Um, and then it will come back to me and I'll just do a little bit about what's next for this site. So, um, Active Travel England um, is a government agency uh, created to make non-motorised travel preferred, the preferred mode of transport by providing quality infrastructure for non-motorised users. And as you can see, their objective is to try and achieve 50% of trips in England's towns and cities to be walked, wheeled, or cycled. Um, so the initiative has lots of benefits. Um, so you've got individuals' health, benefits to communities and the environment. And these benefits can be realized through reduced carbon emissions, improved physical and mental health. And as a result of these benefits, there is actually a lot of funding at the moment, as I'm sure, again, you're aware, uh, for more schemes like this. And uh, as much as I do really like this initiative, it does present a lot of challenges, as you've probably just seen in this presentation before. It makes our job as designers quite difficult. Um, but one of the um, developments actually produced the TFGM is the Cyclops Junction. So as you can see on the right-hand side here, is uh, actually a snippet from 2019 JCT paper, I think, um, of the prototype junction. And this, uh, this, uh, this layout um, obviously meets LTM 120 by separating pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles. And the most distinctive thing about it is the orbital cycle track that runs around the edge. Um, and typically it involves a um, a cycle stage, cycle pedestrian stage where all traffic is stopped. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'll go on and talk about the site itself. So um, it's located in Preston um, to the southwest. It's about 700 metres from the city centre and the train station. And it's on a junction with Broadgate and Fishergate Hill. Um, the junction was chosen um, because it's on two very popular cyclist cycle routes. Um, we've got the Preston to Penworth and Cycle Way, which uh, links residents into the centre of Preston. Um, and we've also got the Guild Wheel, which is the NCN Route 622, which is a 21 mile, um, almost traffic free walk in a cycle route, um, as shown in the image there. So the previous layout here did not cater well for high volumes of pedestrians or cyclists, um, which is why it was identified as a prime candidate to be upgraded. I'll now hand over to Amadeep, who will talk through some of the designs. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, so as Michael mentioned, the previous layout of the junction wasn't um, suited to cater for high volumes of NMUs. So what I'm showing you here um, is an illustration of the previous layout of the junction, which you can immediately tell was um, catered heavily towards motorised traffic with things like Triangle Islands and 
separately signaled movements um, for motorized traffic. Um, the lines that have been drawn on here indicate um, routes to and from the guild wheel, uh, the green one indicating the direct route, um, and we've also got an orange one indicating the route from the northern arm or Strand Road, and the magenta line indicating the route from the eastern arm or Fishergate Hill. So there were a number of issues um, identified here that made things difficult for NMUs. Um, so one thing, the Preston to Penwortham Cycleway, um, it's a segregated cycle track um, to the west of the junction. Um, and before um, the scheme went in place, it terminated abruptly, forcing cyclists onto a mandatory cycle lane on the carriageway um, before they could continue their route, perhaps onto the guild wheel. Um, so, yeah, the green wheel, uh, the guild wheel indicated by the green line there. So, um, for cyclists getting to and from that route, they would have to um, traverse, um, any arm they traverse would require them to do so in multiple stages. And when they did so, they had to wait on refuge islands not suitably sized to cater for both um, pedestrians um, and cyclists. So, with those issues in mind, a uh, design was to de develop to improve things. Um, for NMUs. So this here is an illustration of the design at the junction. Um, and as you can see, it's got some um, resemblance to the prototype that Michael was showing you earlier with some key differences. Um, some of those differences being um, the use of a two-way cycle crossing across the northern arm and on the western arm. And that's to facilitate movements to and from the guild wheel. Um, we've now got a seamless transition between the Preston to Penwortham cycle track and the guild wheel, um, which is accessed via the new orbital cycle track. And regardless of which arm um, the enemies are crossing, they only need to do so in a single stage now. And um, the crossings themselves are physically separated, which um, makes it more safer for pedestrians and cyclists. So um, in this next bit, I'm just going to discuss um, one of the um, interesting challenges we faced when designing and developing a layout for the cycle signals um, at the cycle crossing. So this um, image on the left here illustrates um, the equipment layout for the cycle crossing across the Northern Arm or Strand Road for eastbound cyclists. Um, and I'm just going to show you a video now um, of a cyclist approaching this crossing from the Preston to Penwortham cycleway. So no one to give way to, the cyclist goes straight through and then stops at a red signal. So the position of the equipment, as in most situations, was dictated by the position of the stop line, which we required to be a minimum of one meter from the edge of the carriageway. And this was just to provide a safe distance between the edge of the front wheel of the waiting cyclist and moving traffic on the carriageway. Um, from here, the cycle, signals, the cycle signals were positioned half a meter in front of the cycle stop line, and that was just to maximize visibility um, from the waiting position. We've also chosen to provide a cycle signal on both sides, again, to maximize visibility from uh, multiple approaches to the crossing. In this um, particular example, you can approach from both the guild wheel and the Preston to Penwortham cycle track. Um, a push button demand unit was included in our design and the position was determined using the typical dimensions of a cargo bike as illustrated in LTN 120. So using these dimensions, it was expected <coughs> there to be a distance of approximately 1.5 meters to the front of the wheel to the position of the bicycle seat. Um, and as well as a push button, um, an above ground detector was used as a means of inserting um, a demand for um, the cycle crossing. So when the detector registered the presence of a cyclist, it would insert a demand for the crossing and illuminate the weight lap. I'm just going to show you a video of that um, uh, where a cyclist is approaching the cycle crossing um, on Broadgate. So the detector picks them up, they don't push the button, the demand's inserted, and the lamp illuminates automatically. Um, so, following completion of the design and testing the operation on site, we made a note of the lessons we learnt. Um, a fixed intergreen period was used um, for, the cycle, um, for the cycle crossings. Um, so, when that was measured, we um, estimated to be about five seconds 
and which is the minimum as required by LTN 120. Um, so we opted not to use um, an extendable intergreen, um, but wouldn't um, totally exclude it if we felt um, it was warranted on, on other schemes. Um, and within our design, we included conditioning to um, extend the green period, um, which was going to be extended by above ground detection. Um, the facility worked during FAT testing and um, during force conditions on site, but failed to work in practice due to the suitability of the above ground detector to um, detect moving objects such as an appro um, approaching cyclist. Uh, we want to treat cyclists more like cars rather than pedestrians, but it relies on having the right signals equipment. So providing a push button treats the cy uh, cyclists more like pedestrians, but with reliable detection, the need for push buttons um, for cyclists can be removed so long as there is a means of providing a visual indication to cyclists that the crossing has been demanded. And this would in turn reduce um, equipment quantities for items such as poles, push buttons, and associated underground equipment. Um, I'm just going to hand over back to Michael now, who will run through our next steps. Thank you. Um, so, following the commissioning um, of the, earlier on this summer, um, um, further discussions have taken place with Lancashire um, Signals team and the Active Travel team, and they wanted to discuss options for actually really driving the priority for uh, non-motorised users, cyclists and pedestrians. So we revise, we come up with a revised staging order, uh, which you can see on the screen, which we work, we're working on at the moment. Um, we've, it's not, this is a sort of work in progress at the moment, but the idea is, is that cyclists or pedestrians will always get the next stage. So rather than having to wait half the cycle uh, or possibly traversing the junction during the intergreen period, we give them that priority and say, you can go next. We've built in some conditioning so we can manage that on site and we plan to fully validate that. Um, we'll use some, uh, we've got mover as well so we can look at things like saturation to manage when those come in. Um, so again, it's to be tested and maybe this is a presentation for next year. Um, possibly one for the movie user group. So, just to summarise then, um, I think the scheme has been successful so far. It's delivered improved facilities for non-motorised users and cyclists. It's vastly simplified their route across the junction um, and it's providing se segregated facilities for them. I think the scheme has obviously highlighted improvements um, that could be made and I think this junction would really benefit from some slightly smarter detection, uh, much like some of the stuff we've seen here over the last two days. Um, and finally, I think something we, that was mentioned yesterday about modelling um, and actually on an active travel scheme, we really need to be thinking about modelling the benefits for cyclists and pedestrians and maybe move the importance of optimization for traffic uh, down the list a little bit. Um, and yes, that's it. That's us. Okay. Well, thanks very much indeed um, to Michael. <laughs> and Do we have any questions? There's one up. Oh, one here. Ashley Unum from WSP, me again. Um, on your layout for the pedestrian crossings over the circulating cycle track, so you had zebra crossings there. Um, I presume that's to meet the DMRB requirement of all crossings through a junction have to be, mustn't be a mixture of controlled and uncontrolled. But LTM 120 says you shouldn't use zebra crossings at a junction with signalised crossings. So what made what was the key factor in choosing to follow DMRB and not follow LTM 120? Um, so um, we developed the design sort of together with um, Lancashire and we did ask that particular question um, because there are cyclops junctions out there at the moment which have, uh, use sort of uncontrolled crossings, so buff tacked up heavy without the zebra 
markings. Um, and when we first looked at the scheme, it was our first Cyclops, and we thought that's probably the way it should be. Um, but um, with um, engagement with TFGM, they felt that a zebra, an informal zebra style of crossing was a bit better, um, just so that um, cyclists would still give way to pedestrians. Um, but the interactions between them are a bit more intuitive. So whilst it doesn't quite follow LTN 120's guidance, um, it's probably a more intuitive design for those NMUs. Um, so, but it's, it's still very much up for debate, and it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are future cycle obstructions which use the uncontrolled um, option instead. Okay, thank you. Was there one at the top line? Uh, thanks, Pete Dyson from yesterday's Transport for Humans talk. Um, one, two questions actually. One, what, what's your view of the cycling, uh, Cyclops roundabouts? Uh, one of them was, was in Cambridge and has had some feedback this year. And then second, um, how might you evaluate this, uh, this new Cyclops junction to, to see people's responses from motorists and from other, uh, other users? Um, I can answer the second one. I'm not that familiar with the Cyclops roundabout, um, but I don't know if you, you've seen that one. Um, no, so is that an uncontrolled roundabout? Uh, yeah, there aren't signals on it, I don't think. No. Uh, so is your question like, how do they compare? Or? Yeah, I suppose so. I thought you might have seen yeah, it that, or uh, yeah, I've, a different I've, um, type of junction. I've not looked at it in detail, but um, it's, it's interesting actually because there's another scheme where it's, it's sort of in its early stages and they're assessing whether or not to, um, so they're, they're looking at enemy improvements at this site, it's currently a roundabout, and they're deciding whether or not to provide a sort of hold the left turn facility with the roundabout and an orbital cycle track which goes around it, or convert it into what would be a much more you know, heavily involved civil to work, converting it into a, um, an intersection like that, so your typical cyclops. Um, in my opinion, um, a cyclops is probably better for enemies, even though it would require more work. Um, it's a lot less distance for them to traverse the junction. So, personally, I prefer the signalised crossroads um, for cyclists, and rather than the roundabout. And I think there was, there was one other thing. I think um, so. They are planning to. Um, I think Lancashire are planning to put either city sensors up. Is that right? Yeah. Um, which will monitor um, the usage. Uh, ideally, obviously, we would have had those before and after data. But we can uh, we can monitor the change over the future. Hello, uh, Cam uh, Cambridge, Richard Link. Uh, just say the Cyclops um, you said about in Cambridge. Uh, we call it a Dutch style roundabout. So it, it is a ring. The cyclists have priority, but basically they've got priorities over um, combined sort of zebra crossings all the way around, and that's under review at the moment. Um, we have got a Cyclops. So we copied. Manchester as well. You know, we got a very successful site. Um, we use zebras um, across across the um, walkways as well. Um, I also know you've used um, blue ahead only uh, aspects. Um, I used no right turn aspects on mine because I didn't want cyclists to be able to turn through the pedestrian crossings. Um, one, um, can you sort of discuss why you went for the blue? Because some people don't. Um, and also, does it have a traffic regulation order as well for that? There was quite a lot of discussion, actually, about the low-level cycle um, uh, box signs, essentially. Um, and I can't actually... I think we went with a head only all, all round. Um, but we did... Yeah, but we did look at, actually, for certain movements, banning... Um, so sort of saying the no left turn, or no, sorry, no right turn, obviously for the conflict, but allowing the left turn. Um, but for simplicity and to avoid confusion for cyclists, um, we went with the ahead uh, all around. Yeah, because um, um, whilst you know you want to ban a particular movement to avoid that conflict with the adjacent pedestrians, the um, <coughs> um, cycle facilities, the tracks leading off the junction, were a lot better. And whilst um, it would be okay for um, at some points, um, cyclists just to sort of get up to the carriageway midway through the crossing, it would be better for them to use the formalised 
um, track, which gets them onto the carriageway instead. So that's why we just wanted them to stick to those routes instead. Thank you. OK, I think, well, thank you very much indeed. It was a very interesting presentation. And we'll move on to the next presentation.